How's it going ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Next Thought. In this video I'm going to talk about seven types of software engineers. First I would like to talk about some of my own experience. Uh, I'm a new rat and uh, I have a lot of friends that are new grad too. When I ask them what kind of works I'm going to do in the future, they will just answer me software engineers. However, when I ask them what kind of areas or what types of software engineers you are going to be, they just answer me, I don't know. Um, I think this is a very common you know, situation for most of the software engineering positions. Uh, they just do not have you know, that kind of detailed description. Uh, and uh, for a lot of new grads, right, they just have no idea and they just accept those offers. Um, however, when they went in, they just find that is not super for them. Therefore, I think this video is really important for those software engineering uh, students. If you want to find an internship or if you want to find a full-time job, you have to know what are you going to do when you have a job, right? Therefore, I think this video uh, is really helpful for those students. Alright, let's get started. The first type is front-end engineer. For front-end engineer, they're basically to design the outlook or the appearance for, uh, for example, the website or uh, the app. There are actually three components for um, front-end engineers. One is HTTP, and second is um, CSS, and third is JavaScript. For HTTP, it's basically the layout for, for example, the web page, which is used for uh, the user interaction. For example, when a user uh, registers a account, uh, then they're actually interacting with the front end. But for CSS, it's more like about to design the uh, appearance of your um, page. For example, your font, your font size, your margin, your background, etc. Uh, while for JavaScript, it's more like a animation. And I think this is the most, you know, probably complicated um, programming part for front end engineers. And uh, uh, there are definitely a lot of other kind of you know, uh, formats for the front end, but this is just a traditional format. And for most of the uh, front end engineers, they're actually using JavaScript as their program language. After we talk about front end, there will be definitely a back end engineer. So for back end engineers, they're actually cooperating with the front engineers. Um, they were actually asking the front engineer, right? So these are um, the parameters or variables that I need in the back end. Therefore, they give this list to the front engineers and front engineer they will do their job. On the other hand, the back engineer will do more about uh, the back end, for example, the system, the APIs, and also the database. Um, and therefore, for back engineer, their work is usually more than the front engineers. Um, so here is a story I heard about. So one of my seniors, he's working at a particular company as a front engineer. and. Uh, He's very, you know, chill, relaxed. He can just like back home like after 5 p.m. However, for many of uh, the backend engineers in his team, who actually, you know, can't leave until like 8, 9, or even 10 p.m. This is because most of the bugs actually, you know, come from the backend instead of the front end, and therefore the workload for the backend engineers are, you know, heavier than the front end engineers. The third type of engineer is full stack engineer. So full stack engineer here is like a combination for front end and back end engineer. So their tasks are even more, and uh, they also require you know more skills. This position will usually appear in the startups for the big companies. This position definitely yes uh, will appear, but not that often. For big companies, they will be more specific usually in the job description, either front end or back end. The fourth type here is system engineer or server engineer. In my opinion, these two engineers are quite similar. Uh, however, for many companies, right, they will either put system engineer or server engineer uh, in the job description. So their job is basically to implement the work done by, for example, the backend engineer and uh, to implement that in the system. On the other hand, they are also monitoring um, the traffic or the packets that come into the servers. Therefore, most of the work would be maintaining the system, the server, to make sure uh, they run very well. These kind of uh, positions are really common in financial companies or financial institutions, or also uh, you know, payment companies, since they have a lot of transactions, right? And uh, uh, millions of packets are actually forwarding to their servers. 
therefore they have to make sure that uh, their servers work well and work efficiently and therefore they will have a lot of system or server engineers and by the way for a system and server engineer most of the time will be dealing with the Linux instead of uh, either Windows or Mac OS and the fifth engineer here is algorithm engineer for an algorithm engineer the job is basically to write codes to design an algorithm for a specific task they are not like front engineer or back end engineer in a particular area. Instead, they are just developing, you know, those kind of um, algorithms, and they are not required to know, you know, the system or uh, the infrastructure of a particular website. Since their job is to design the algorithm and make it as efficient as possible. The sixth position here is testing or QA engineer. Well, this is actually a little bit low-level engineer, and in some companies, they are even not regarded as engineer. So they will first be a QA in a particular team, and once they get promoted, they will be the software engineer. Their job is basically to test um, those kind of either websites or games, uh, and this is very common for those gaming companies since. Once, for example, uh, other engineers that created this game, right? They have to have these kind of engineers to test the games and uh, to make sure the game has no bug, though it can never be achieved. <laughs> Their jobs are quite important in teams, but you know the salary may not be that high compared to other kind of engineers. The last type of engineer I would like to mention here is machine learning or artificial intelligence engineer. This kind of engineer is, you know, quite hot in recent years. And uh, there are a lot of companies that need to find uh, these engineers. However, machine learning or AI engineer is really hard to find for most of the companies, since actually the schools are not, you know, um, focusing on these areas. No matter if CS students or other major students. And here is the problem I found on most of the new grad um, students. Machine learning is a really hard topic. You not only need to know how to write code, but also you need to know its fundamentals. The you know, the deeper uh, infrastructure or ideology for the, for example, neural network, right, or deep learning. However, for most of students, probably they are a little bit eager. They want, you know, to show something. They want to prove themselves. They can write codes uh, for machine learning models or artificial intelligence. Therefore, they basically skip the fundamental part and uh, to go to the coding part directly. Therefore, during my internship, I talked with other uh, students who are uh, writing machine learning codes. Uh, since they're actually downloading these codes from others and just to, to do a little bit changes. However, when they encounter problems, they just can't solve themselves. Since they just have no idea why this kind of problem will occur. And when I talk with them, I know they basically have no fundamentals for machine learning. Uh, and this is actually very common uh, if you apply for these jobs. During the interviews, the interviewer can easily know whether you are uh, experienced in machine learning or not. This can be easily told. Therefore, my suggestion for most of students who want to be a machine learning or artificial intelligence engineer is just to start with the most basic parts, then to make yourself better. And there is no doubt that uh, machine learning or AI engineer's salary is definitely the highest in uh, all these engineers. Personally, um, I got interviews for back-end engineers, full-stack engineers, system or server engineers, algorithm engineers, and also machine learning or and artificial intelligence engineer. So I got a lot of interviews with um, different positions, and I think in the next video I'm going to, you know, talk more about my interview process and uh, what are the basic questions I was asked during the interviews. Thank you very much for watching, and hope to see you in the next video.